Let's bring in our panel now from Dhaka. We have Mohibul Hassan Chowdhury. He's the organizing secretary of Bangladesh's ruling party, the Awami League. In Frankfurt, Germany, we have Ronai San Nguyen. He's a human rights activist and coordinator of the Free Rohingya Coalition. And in Chiang Mai, Thailand, is Nyo On Mint. He was once a spokesman for Aung San Suu Kyi and is a former member of Myanmar's ruling National League for Democracy. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Mohibul Hassan Chowdhury, let me begin with you, sir. Are those tens of thousands of Rohingya who were supposed to be, or the thousands who were supposed to be part of the initial wave and then the others in the successive waves, are they justified in not wanting to go back right now because the conditions are not right and they don't have any guarantees about their future and their safety when they go back? Uh, from what we have understood, uh, uh, from our, ob our objective point of view, this is the right time to go back. Um, if it wasn't the right time, we wouldn't have allowed anyone to go back because, you see, the refugees that, uh, who cross the border, they are our guests and we have looked after them. We will look after them and if there is any more incident, we are prepared to take on more. However, we are also concerned about their claim on the land because this land belongs to them, they were born there, they are uh, uh, local ethnic uh, uh, people in that area. So it's important that they go back and claim, exert that claim. Um, yes, the conditions uh, cannot be ever said that it would ever be perfect. However, them going back and international community keeping a close eye on their treatment would eventually lead to a long-term solution for these right. people. Right, certainly. Because but Mohibul Hassan, if there's any chance that these people will be killed, harmed, have their homes burnt down, Surely you would agree that they should rather stay where they are right now. You see, we have dealt with the Myanmar authorities uh, bilaterally, uh, uh, as well as engaging the international community and UN organizations. Uh, we do not think that there is any such threat uh, at the moment, considering the uh, level of attention received uh, from all over the world. Uh, uh, if there is any, of course, we will take what is, whatever is necessary action. Mm -hmm. Wise. So uh, we are confident that this is, will not be repeated. Okay. Ronay San Win, there's no major threat and these people should start going back. Is that how you see it? No, I don't agree with Mr. Chaudhary because this condition there is uh, unacceptable for the returnees. Uh, just last month on 24th of October at the UN Security Council, in, uh, International Independent Fact-Finding Mission Chair Mr. Mazuki have, has briefed there that genocide is ongoing. I have a lot of contact in, in, inside the Rakhine state. Just two days ago, uh, four Rohingya uh, 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 internally displaced persons were shot by the police. So the, the situation is still remain unchanged. There is no guarantee that these people will not be persecuted again. These people will, will, uh, will be allowed to go back to their original village again. And th there are no assurance for the, this uh, uh, citizen, uh, restoring their citizenship. And the uh, Myanmar government is offering them the national verification card, mm -hmm. which is known as the genocide card. And the, uh, we have been been rejecting this card since 2015, okay. and there is no guarantee for anything. And the re right. refugee and the survivor who are now in Bangladesh, they make the right decision that they, they are refusing to go back. Okay, so Nyon Mint, when we heard Ronai San Nguyen say that these people are rejecting that card, which he called the genocide card, you smiled. Tell me why. <laughs> okay, let's see. That's a too politicized towards the. I'm really, you know, uh, sad about that the the refugee issue. But when we look at the humanitarian perspective, when the uh, the Bangladeshi, uh, the, the 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 authority also mentioned about this is time to go, and then you know the I think the government preparation about the return is that the it's it's quite a bit like another five star hotel you staying, but uh, I think are very reasonable. And then the security perspective, when the uh, the Mr. Ron Sam wins and mentioned about the four people got uh, shot because of their human traffickers, and then they are trying to kill the the, the policeman in the village. So that's uh, the uh, separate apple and orange issue. But I'm pretty sure that the 7,000 returnees 
were supposed to last, I mean, last week when they were supposed to come back. But this is another, you know, dilemma about, you know, in right. between the right. bilateral agreement. Certainly. So this so is... Let me, so I let me ask you, as a former that's, advisor, that's not, okay, so as a former advisor and somebody who was a part of the party, right? So if you have this bilateral agreement with mm -hmm. the Bangladeshi government, so there's a commitment from right. Myanmar. Okay, we're going to take these people back. No matter what happened in the mm -hmm. past, we're going to take these people back. And these people are saying we're afraid to come back. Isn't it then the duty of the government in Myanmar to put out a message there to say, you will be okay. Nobody's going to attack you and we're going to provide security for you. Shouldn't they be giving these people some confidence building measures? I think the, the government got it. It's a, it's a process. You know, the, the very first time when you never, you know, uh, try it, but you say that, no, no, that's not uh, the safe. But, you know, the, to be concerned with that, the, their security, I, th I think the, uh, the both gentlemen, I totally agree with the both gentlemen, because the whole world is watching. Mm. No one can dare to do anything wrongdoing or any extra, you know, uh, the unofficially, Ill illegally uh, trying to, you know, uh, block them or make them a discrimination against them. Because the, those are perfect houses, uh, what I see that, and then they got to prepare, they got lots of international NGOs, uh, uh, I mean, have been here to monitor every day, every 24 hours. So I don't think that's going to be be dangerous for them. But that's a, the, uh, that's a will, then, you know... Uh, you well, you no don't think it's going to be... You don't think it's going to be dangerous for them to stay in Cox's Bazaar or for them to go back? Which one? I think uh, the go back is at the right. better because... I heard that the Cox Bazaar, that's so many, uh, I mean, uh, the kill by the, uh, the some uh, militant right. Rohingya, you know. Okay, things. well, listen, previous repatriations have not worked, gentlemen. Have a little listen to a bit of a timeline from my colleague about what we've had so far and how it has failed. Have a little listen. In the past, repatriations of the Rohingya from Bangladesh have been far from voluntary. After the first major influx of Rohingya in 1978, the Bangladeshi government ordered the return of more than 180,000 refugees back to Myanmar. Those who didn't cooperate had food rations taken away. Around 10,000 refugees reportedly died from malnutrition. After another wave of Rohingya migration in the early 90s, Bangladesh was once again accused of forcing returns. Only 10% of refugees had volunteered. Rone Sanwin, let me ask you very bluntly, what would it take for these people to go back, if not happily, but with the psychological mindset to give it a chance? What would it take from the Bangladeshis and from the Myanmar government? First of all, we need the international protection there because this cycle of violence has been repeating again and again since 1978. So they need the protection seriously. And also, just a year ago, there are loved ones were killed and slaughtered, burned alive, children were thrown into the fire, women and the gang, uh, girl were gang raped, raped by the Burmese military troop. So they are really afraid to go back without international protection. And also they are seeking for the justice. So uh, this all the criminal who have cry, uh, co committed the genocidal crime and the crime against humanity uh, 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 in Myanmar, against the, this Rohingya people, they should be brought to the International Criminal Court and punish them. Because this crime, are com they are committing the crime again and again because uh, uh, there, uh, there, uh, there is no justice and the, uh, because of the impunity. So th they okay. should be pun punished. And also this protection is the most important. Okay. And uh, 142 UN member voted in support of the recent UN resolution. Right. They should do something. They should take the okay. serious action against the Burmese military criminal. Okay, so peace and repatriation I coming just with justice. I'm going to gonna ask Nyon Mint, I'm gonna ask Nyon Mint his opinion in a second, but Moibel Hassan Chowdhury, you want to come in? Right. I just wanted to add uh, to what the, the gentlemen have just said. 
uh, already International uh, uh, Criminal Court, ICC, have started a proceeding, investigation proceeding against the uh, specific uh, individuals of the, uh, uh, the uh, Myanmarese military. Uh, and our current Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, has spoken, uh, beside all the other issues that uh, affect Bangladesh, specifically on this issue in, at the uh, UN General Meeting. And she has uh, internationalized uh, this uh, issue enough for them to uh, have enough international attention and focus. Um, we have repeatedly said that there had been uh, genocidal incidents in, within Myanmar. We have records, we have the evidences, uh, uh, and uh, if necessary, we will cooperate with the International Criminal Court uh, to bring the perpetrators uh, to justice. Uh, and our border will always be open for any prosecuted, persecuted people within Myanmar, be it the right. Rohingyas or the Karens or whoever it is. So what I wanted to add here is that uh, you have to have confidence on, on Sheikh Hasina. She has taken this as more or less a personal case because she was so affected by the level of violence and the uh, torture that she had herself witnessed when she went there. And not only that she went there, she had taken war leaders into that area and actually allowed them to see what had happened there. And um, uh, I would ask the uh, relevant uh, community leaders, they keep the pressure on the Myanmar's uh, uh, authority. Unless they do that, you see, the ultimate objective is to have a sustainable solution for right. them in Rakhine state. Uh, if you give up your claim on the land that you have always uh, 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 been living in, uh, ultimately, this kind of uh, 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 sort of uh, this mass exodus will keep on happening. But in the past, Bangladesh and Myanmar had a, a sort of a bilateral understanding where uh, uh, this was not internationalized enough. Right. International community did not give okay, enough attention. So it is international. But this time it's different. Certainly. And as was mentioned earlier on, the world is watching. Nyo on Mint, let me ask you, given that the world is watching, given that we've seen a symbolic expression of international justice in the sense that Amnesty International revoked their highest honor that they had given to Aung San Suu Kyi. They took it away now. They said she doesn't deserve it anymore. Given the scale of the accusations and the scale of the documented crimes, isn't it fair that the military in Myanmar comes under the spotlight or the jurisdiction of international eyes? That if people have committed these crimes, they are tried in international courts. I think uh, that's that's a fair enough to that um, uh, because that the the Myanmar military has already charged and jailed the uh, the uh, of it, its you know the troops and the officials and the very high ranking and that those you know regional commander has been you know discharged and he was fired and other like in in Din village they were being you know prosecuted. So then, you know, that's going to be investigation and investigation. So, but the Amnesty, point is that Amnesty Human Rights Watch and the United Nations are saying that those people that are prosecuting the rotten apples are actually the ones behind the major crimes. That's why Absolutely. there's a hunger for international justice here. That's why the Rohingya yeah, people are also saying we only want to go back if there's justice. Yeah. Wouldn't that yeah, be fair? Before no, no, because, you know, before you got the investigation, fully investigation and fully, why you, the whole international, the people said that, why they are guilty, even without, you know, like, you know, that that's a, only a one side accusation. And then decision come from a one side accusation. And then I, I do not think that this is not a, you know, correct for them. One side that that was a genocide. The one side that they should come back and that they should come back. So then why that are people, it's a very dangerous area. Why people wanted to go home? Because but they want to go home they, because it's, they, it's their home, right? Yeah. Ultimately, it's their home. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they want to go back. It depends, you know. Uh, you know, the everyone who from the from uh, the Rakhine, and then they, they should be welcome. And then because the in the, the the third party was playing too much politicized. Which was the third party? I mean, like I know, not. I mean, uh, the, those victims, those are refugees, those are seven hundred thousand. Yeah, but 
the other international that the the other day I I met with that the uh, international community in Yangon, and then they said that they have only 800 interviewees from uh, at the uh, Cox Bazaar. So they never ask that the people who are 500,000 Rohingya are very peaceful living in Rakhine State. They never run away. Yeah, but that's a that's a question. But 800 is a sample, right? You would accept that that's a fairly solid sample out of in? half a million people. But let me bring in Ronai Sanwin because we're running out of time. Ronai Sanwin, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me tell you, you know, in the Rakhine state, there are still half a million Rohingya remaining. Uh, from, from them, you know, uh, uh, 130,000 are in the concentration camp for more than six years. And also, the, uh, the Rohingya who are in the northern Rakhine state, in Budiro, Mongdo, and the Ratero, they cannot live from their village, you know. They are living in the village like the prisoner. Wherever they want to go, they need to bribe the village uh, authority it, 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 and also the township authority get the, the permission. Rakhine. They cannot travel from, they cannot travel from one town to another. They are completely like living in the, you know, like the prisoner. Those people in the city are more than six years now in the concentration camp. I had the many private uh, closed door meeting with the many government high rank officials. They use the camp as a, a concentration camp. And also that the camp bail at the border side, so-called they are calling the transient camp with the barbed wire. They are look like the concentration camp, you know. So there is no freedom at all. There is nothing, no access to the education, there are the school from the government, but the, you know that the teacher are not going to the school, the children are not getting the education. There are a lot of things. That is that is the reason uh, the, the chair of the IFFN said, you know, that genocide is ongoing. I have a lot of contact there. Um, I have built the, my own network there since 2012, so I have all the right. updated. You can just, like, just say, you know, uh, these people are living in peace. They are forced to accept the uh, national verification card, which we call the genocide card, you know, just uh, just two days, uh, two, uh, th three, four days ago, 106 uh, Rohingya were fleeing to Malaysia, but they were trapped in nearby the Rangoon, and they were deported to Sitwe, and they arrived today. They were forced to accept that this national verification right. card. Okay, Be you know what we we're going to do? We were once recognized as the citizen, and uh, right. our, our attending Rohingya was officially recognized, so they have to recognize all of our right and uh, they Understood. have to give Rana us Sanwin. all our, our right that we have before uh, 1970. I appreciate that from you. Listen, we're going to do another program very soon. We'll do another segment. Yeah. I promise you within the next few yeah. weeks and we'll focus a lot on this verification card. We'll have you back on the program. I thank you for joining us because yeah, we're yeah. running out thank of time. You. Ronai San Win, Nyo Nyo yeah, Mint and you. Mohibul thank Hassan Chaudhry. I thank you very much for joining us here on yeah. The Newsmakers.